Hello, fellow translators. Today, we are going to talk about clients. We're going to talk about good clients, big clients, clients that the clients that you want to get. You want to get a good client that gives you a lot of work to do and uh, that pays you a lot and gives you regular work. And, uh, you know, th these are the types of clients that you're looking for. And I'm going to tell you why you're probably not going to want to look for people like that. And uh, the big reason is, well, the, the idea came to me because on LinkedIn, actually, someone was writing about how she had an issue with, I don't have it in front of me, but basically she had a client, she has a client that accounts for about uh, 30% or more of her of her income and, and what she does. And it's a regular client that gives her regular jobs. And the client was being a lot more demanding and asking a lot more stuff. And it was just becoming too much. Like she had to do all this QC of Anyway, she had to do a whole lot more work for the same stuff, and, and it really wasn't worth it. And she was wondering what she should do. And so I gave my two cents there, uh, but I kind of wanted to give my two cents here as well and uh, let you know. Because a lot of people, you really want to find those big clients that can give you a lot of work, but you can fall into a trap at that point. And the trap is that basically you become their employee. You're here, you're working for yourself as an entrepreneur, as a freelancer, because you want to do your own thing. But if you have a client who's too big, and by the way, I said 30% there, that's less than 50%, but 30% is already a big chunk, especially if the other 70 is divided into a, a lot of other clients. And if you have a client who accounts for a lot of your business, well, then they, you basically become their employee. And what do I mean by this? I mean that they can kind of dictate all the rules and they'll tell you, they'll be a lot more demanding. They'll ask you to work late, to work weekends, to do this, to do that, to add more, to then, da, 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 da. And since this is such a big chunk of what you earn, you'll be kind of, I mean, you'll have to do it sort of, unless you want to risk losing a client, who is a, which is a big chunk of what you earn. And, and I, I'd given this advice before, but I always said that you want to keep it under 50%. But this person was having problems with a client that accounted for 30% of what she earned. And so I thought it was worth bringing up again. And so, yeah, when you get, these, when you get clients and you, when you realize that one client accounts for a huge chunk of what you earn, more than 50, or more than 30%, you know, a, a big, big enough chunk like that, then um, suddenly you might realize, that, well, the issue is they're going to realize it. I don't care what you're, you know, no matter how little you tell them and stuff like that, if they have an ongoing relationship with you, they'll pretty much realize that they're one of the sole providers for you. And even if they don't realize it, they'll sort of get a feeling that maybe that's the case and they'll proceed accordingly. So just beware because when you get clients like this, they may ask you to do a lot more work for the same pay and suddenly you feel not only beholden to them, but you're losing out on other work you could be getting because you're dedicating so much time for these big clients that uh, you're missing out on getting other new clients. And so you kind of want to avoid this situation. Now, you're thinking, okay, well then I, 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 on the other hand, I don't want little clients that just give me, you know, one birth certificate to translate and I have to go chase a new client for every new birth certificate either. Uh, you know, I want to get bigger clients, but so how do I divide it up? And the, the answer is, I don't know. Before I would have told you around 30%, you know, but uh, this, this uh, lady was having a problem with a client who was accounted for 30% of her income. So I could say 25, 20, something like that. Ultimately, it's whatever you feel comfortable with because it, it'll also very much depend on the clients themselves. And uh, you'll get a feel for it after a while as to which clients are worth it, which ones are better or not. And by the way, this can change. A, a client that you've had for a long time could get a new project manager and things change completely. This happened more than once to me. And so you constantly need to just keep track of this. But my recommendation in broadly as a generalization would be that if you find yourself trapped by any client and – you know, you think if you tr find yourself trapped by a small client, then fine, get rid of them. But I'd say especially if it's a big client because then you feel more trapped because what can you do? You have to earn from them. My recommendation is to try to find someone new. Now, you can try to find someone new in your spare time or if it just gets to be too much, set yourself a deadline and tell yourself, okay, by the end of this month, next month, whatever it might be, I will find a new client. If I don't find a new client, I'm still dropping this client and I'll use that spare time to find new clients. And by the way, when I tell you to drop this client, there are several ways to do it. Um, first of all, so first of all, 
when you're trying to find a new client, uh, you know, do that in your spare time with the idea that this client can take the place of your client. If you haven't done it by the end of the month or two months or whatever it is, then you can decide to drop the client regardless, even if you found a new client or not. And the way you drop them is you don't say, bye, I'm not doing business with you anymore, but you have certain ground rules. You'd be like, look, due to increased volume or to my workload, or you don't even have to give a reason. You just say from now on, I will uh, be doing X amount of work, but it won't include, you know, DTP. It won't include this or that. Or I can only work X number of hours per day or do X number of words per day. Or I can, uh, you know, whatever boundaries you have, set them right there. And just say that, you know, this is a rule for all my clients. You don't have to say specifically to them. You can say it as if it's a rule for everyone you deal with and just say, you know, this is what I'm going to do from now on and or I'm going to charge more or whatever it might be. And, and then see how they react. You know, worst case scenario, they say, no, we're not dealing with that anymore. In which case you have all that free time to find a new client who will, who will be a better client for you. And, uh, and that way you have the spare time that you can use to find new clients rather than have all your time taken up by them. Um, or you could be pleasantly surprised and they could be like, okay, fine. And they'll just keep working with you. But according to your new rules, which they can take seriously and then uh, and then you can work with them. Now, they could also just say, okay, and not follow your rules, in which case you need to be strict about it. It'd be like, nope, I set my rules. That's how it is. And you can't make exceptions or all that because once you start making exceptions, then the whole thing goes away. And uh, so, yeah, just make sure that you find a way to handle it. And by and large, I would say try to find clients. Obviously, you're always trying to find bigger clients, but uh, keep also trying to find new clients and – Ideally, maybe, you know, look, as I said, it always changes, but maybe cap it at 20, 25% per client. And uh, at which point you try to find new clients and, you know, especially with regular work and stuff like that, that you can handle. And, uh, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Look, and you might disagree with me completely because I know people who maybe you have one client and that's all you need and you work great with them and you, and you're earning enough and you're having a ball and it works great. Absolutely. Like I said, it can really depend on the client and especially the project manager. But always be aware of that situation. If you, even if you have a client and you work great with them, they could get a new project manager and then you're stuck with a client who accounts for 100% of your income and you don't know what to do. So just something to keep in mind. And I do think it's important to keep this in mind once you start getting clients, especially big clients that account for a lot of your income. And, um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Please let me know what you think. Please let me know if you disagree because I'd love to hear other points of view as well. Maybe you work with a big client and, uh, and it works differently for you. Please let me know. And otherwise, I will talk to you next time. Okay, thanks. Bye. Sabedum.